We will uh, start the second part of the video uh, that is MCQ question and the first part of the video we discuss the question number 6 and 7 long case scenarios. So, according to my analysis of your ZL1 advanced audit and assurance paper, the most difficult examination questions are MCQ question. If someone asks in this world what is the most difficult type of question in this world, I would say that is MCQ question. But when you look at the question number 6 and 7, you may feel it is difficult because of the large scenario and the large content of the information are given by the examiner. But those questions are if you know how to approach those questions properly, so you can answer those questions as well as you can get the higher marks. But if you do not practice the MCQ question in a right way, so it will be really challenging or it is really difficult for you to score the marks. So, in order to answer the MCQ question, you need to have a you, know, you need to have a good knowledge of the syllabus, right? The selective study sometimes may not work for MCQ question. So, you need to have a good understanding and also you need to practice the question. So, you have enough enough uh, MCQ question to be practiced. There are 60 question in 60 question in the revision kit, as well as you have about uh, almost all four pass papers, 10 into 4, all five pass papers, pilot paper, mock paper, December online. February examination paper and like July examination paper, there are 5 examination. So, those 5 examination we have about 10 into 5, 50 questions. All together about 110 questions are readily available for you to practice the MCQ questions, right. So, before starting the MCQ discussion of July examination paper, I want to apply my golden rules. I want to tell you my golden rules which I discussed during the webinars. When you attend the any MCQ question, always apply this golden rules number one elimination theory elimination theory what is that so you may be wondering you may be wondering that whether it is a auditing theory no elimination theory mean that is theory mean that is that that i'm i'm telling that always you don't try to select the always don't try to select the correct answer immediately so, because all four answers, sometimes all three answers or two answers are almost similar. So, you try to eliminate, try to eliminate the wrong answers. So, when you eliminate the wrong answers, definitely you can eliminate two answers and after that, you can, you have a two answers to be selected. From that too so, you think it over and always think that the immediate answer that comes to your mind may not be the correct answer. So, therefore, do not try to Immediately, if, I, if you feel this is the answer, do not just mark and go to the next question. Think twice whether it is a correct answer. So, think twice on the basis that the immediate answer may not be the correct answer, challenge the answer, right. So, therefore, the second one, second theory that I am telling, so the immediate answer. So, do not try to apply the immediate answer that comes to your mind in the MCQ question. So, if you practice all 110 questions that is available for you, before the next examination of MCQ, before the next examination, all this MCQ question, I am sure that. So, you will be able to, you will be able to score 10 out of 10, right. Let us go to the discussion of this paper. The question number 1, I will try to adapt these two uh, techniques while I am discussing the question, the question number 1. So, question number 1, 1 for in 1, the external audit team of big data, big sales private limited, this is a private limited. So, as I told you, PLC or the private limited, limited are so crucial information in auditing. So, big sales private limited. Is it the process of designing audit procedures to verify the revenue? So, so we are in the process of designing audit procedures for revenue during the year end at 31st March 2021, the financial year also important in MCQ question. So, revenue auditing. Which of the following audit procedures would provide the most reliable audit evidence in auditing the revenue for the year? So, what will give the most reliable audit evidence in terms of the revenue? So, there is no specific assertion given here. As you can, as you as you know, always the audit procedures are performed for the for an for an assertion to an assertion. But sometimes without assertion also there will be examination questions. Part A: Sending balance confirmation request to select debtors and getting confirmation of the outstanding debtor balances as of the balance sheet date. Part B, performing a variance analysis of the revenue recorded during the year by product and comparing them into revenue recorded in the previous year. Applying sampling techniques to select a sample of revenue recorded during the year, tracing them into supporting documents, supporting documents. 
and then making inquiries from a few customers using the contact numbers provided by the company to verify the amounts due to them due by them to the company at the year end so now the most important part of this question is i don't know whether you notice or not so the most important word is most reliable most reliable so generally in mcq question you have to be you have to be really vigilant on these words most reliable at most likely least likely so because when you see the most reliable wording itself you need to realize that sometime all four answers are correct out of all four you need to select the most reliable one so therefore all four answers are correct now we have to see what is most reliable in terms of revenue number one balance sending balance confirmation to request to select debtors and getting confirmation of the outstanding debtor balance as of the balance sheet date as i told you you need to apply the elimination theory if you apply the elimination theory this answer a can be eliminated because calling confirmation that is circularization of debtors is applicable for the auditing of trade debtors not for revenue so therefore answer a is not an correct answer answer b performing a varying anal variance analysis of the revenue recorded during the year by product and comparing them to them to the revenue recorded in the previous year so the answer a answer a is completely a wrong answer so we are on question number 1.1 so we are auditing revenue revenue so you need you have four answers a b c d so a is a completely wrong answer but the b is an audit procedure that can be done for the revenue because performing analytical review procedures you compare the revenue so therefore that is an correct answer and applying sample in technics to a select sample of revenue recorded during the year and acting them to support in the documents it is also an correct answer and answer d making inquiries from a few customers using the contract numbers provided by the company to verify the amounts due by them to the company at the year end that is a wrong answer because you know contacting them will not ensure the revenue contacting will them sometime ensure the existence of the trade debtors so therefore so my elimination theory i have applied number one elimination theory it has been done now so there are two answers has been eliminated now there are two answers as i told you always you think that immediate answer that comes to your mind may not be the correct answer so out of b and c you need to select the correct answer now so correct answer mean both are correct now you have to sing most reliable most reliable out of the two answers given performing various analysis is also a procedure but the part c it says applying sampling technique to select sample of revenue recorded during the year and tracing them to the supporting document you select rather preparing the analytical procedures you select a sample of trade debtors sorry sample of revenue and you check those into the original documentation that will be the most reliable most reliable answer so therefore answer c will be the correct answer in terms of this question right so we'll go to the next question that that press question from the auditing revenue chapter number 10 and the part 1.2 which of the following so i'm in now the second question the second question which of the following procedure would help the auditor to obtain comfort over the completeness assertion which of the following procedures would help the auditor to obtain comfort over the completeness assertion of bank balances recorded in the balance sheet date so you are auditing the completeness of bank balances so you are auditing the completeness of bank balances completeness of bank balances and question is which of the following procedures will help the auditor to obtain comfort over the completeness assertion so you are auditing 1.2 completeness of banks completeness of bank balances you are in the process of verifying that so what would have been the most appropriate audit procedure for that even even without without looking at the four answers you can tell this if you have done properly the chapter number 11 cash and bank balances calling bank confirmation so if you have learned properly even without looking at the answer you can tell the answer listing all the bank accounts of the entity which the auditor is aware of using the knowledge of the prior audits and sending 
bank confirmation request letter to all those banks yes that is an that is a that is a one method that calling confirmation with regard to the cash and bank with regard to the bank balances sorry not the cash part b obtaining a list of the bank accounts of the entity from the accountant and sending bank confirmation request so that is also a correct because you can send the confirmation letters you can send the re request to the bank third one comparing the bank confirmation received from the banks for the current year with the bank balances received in the previous year you can compare with the current year and the previous year see whether there are any missing item part d requesting all the banks to confirm details of the old account and and facilities of the entity including account accounts open and closed during the year subject to audit so all four answers a b c d all four answers are connected with the bank balance verification and calling confirmation all four audit procedures are with regard to a calling bank confirmation audit procedures so therefore if the examiner is asking a question so what would be the audit procedures for bank balance confirmation all this may be correct but examiner is asking you for what completeness of bank so that mean what whether all the bank accounts which are owned by the which belongs to the company have been recorded in the books of account that is what we need to ensure abc private limited abc plc so they have dealing with the several banks they are dealing with several bank hsbc boc sampath right ntb so likewise they are dealing with the several banks under the hsbc you have a three bank account so now you need to ensure that as an auditor whether all these bank accounts have been correctly recorded in the abc plc that's the goal that's the purpose so in achieving that rather we'll de depending on the as an auditor as an auditor rather we depend on the internal records that are available in the abc plc what you could do is you can ask these banks to confirm without giving the list in in advance without giving a list in advance you can ask these banks to confirm what are the balances available in those com, those or those banks under the name of abc plc you can ask bank to confirm rather you give a list now for example when you are when you are if you want to get a confirmation from a customer so let's say you want to get a confirmation from one of your customer so you without giving a figure you can ask him to confirm what is the amount that he, he is payable to me that type of situation so in this type of situation then the bank will confirm all the balances which are belongs to and available under this company name so that will ensure out of these all th three accounts if the company has accounted only two auditor can catch that the third item has not been accounted so that ensure the completeness of bank balances of the bal recording of bank balances in the financial statements so therefore listing all the bank accounts of the entity which the auditor is aware of using the knowledge in a prior audit and sending bank confirmation request is not the best appropriate obtaining a list of the bank accounts for the entity from the accountant and sending bank confirmation request letter to all those to those to all those banks not much appropriate see comparing the bank confirmation received for the previous year so received for the from the bank for the current year with the bank confirmation received for the previous year part d will be the best answer requesting all banks to confirm requesting all banks to confirm details of all the accounts and facilities of the entity including accounts open and closed during the subject to the audits subject to audit so that will be the correct answer if you go to the next question 1 for in 3 so 1 for in 3 is from the internal auditing chapter number 20 of your syllabus one of the large area but 5% of the syllabus weightage of internal auditing saman is an assistant manager in the internal department of private lanka private limited it's a private limited 
He was recently asked by the chairman of PLL to act as an advisor to the board of directors on risk and control issues present at the strategic level all the way through to the operational level of the company. Which of the following statement is true in respect of the above scenario? Read the question again. Samandi, the assistant manager of the internal department of Pramit Lanka Private Limited. So, we are on question number 3 now. Question number 3. This is asked from the internal audit. Right. So, Zaman is here. Saman is working at Pramit Lanka PLC. Pramit Lanka PLC PLL. He was asked assistant manager of the internal audit department. So, he is assistant manager at the internal audit department. So, internal audit is the internal audit assistant manager. He was asked, recently asked by the chairman of the PLL to act as an advisor to the board of directors. So, this PLL chairman was asked this person to act as an advisor advisor for the board of directors. So, assistant manager of internal audit while he is fulfilling his job of auditing, internal auditing. So, so he has been asked to he has been asked to work as an advisor to the board of directors to advise on certain matters. On risk and control issues present at the strategic level to all through operational level of the company. So, which of the following statement is true respect in respect to the above scenario? I hope that you can remember this one. So, this is coming under the uh, the consultancy of internal auditor is providing the review and consultancy. Can you remember that is available in your internal auditing uh, chapter of your study text? If you exactly if you go to the page number 635, you can find out this this information. Which of the following statement is true in respect of the above scenario? So, what the statement is correct? Number one, there are no restrictions on someone being an advisor to the board of directors as it does not create a threat to the independence of the internal audit department as such. No, so, no safeguards required in, in, to be in place. So, actually the press answer it says answer A. It says someone can do this one, no problem. Is it correct? No. Right. Someone while is acting as the internal auditor, when he goes to the advisor board of directors, there is a conflict of interest come on certain areas. Right, certain areas that will come. So therefore, it's as it is you can you as it is you can't do. B being an advisor of the board of directors should be consistent with the terms of preference. Right, the inter audit charter, and there should be a clear distinction between the regular inter audit service and other work. So his his purpose of or his activities of the internal audit must be clearly defined and his scope of the advice into the board of directors must be clearly defined. So, these two should, have, should not have overlap, those responsibilities should be differentiated and he should work internal audit according to the internal audit plan, internal audit charter. So, yes that is a, if you look at the study text page number 635 of the study text this is available and this, this mentioned as an correct answer. So, we will see for the any correct answers. C, being an advisor to the board of directors and providing regular intervals audit services should not be done at the same time unless the scope of work required from the internal audit department is included in the annual internal audit plan. Wrong. So, it can be done. It, it, there is no such a big restriction. And then, Answer D, serious control weakness identified by Zaman Bigi being an advisor to the board of directors should not be incorporated into the regular internal services as high risk areas. It would create a conflict of interest. What it says, if he has identified a significant weakness as a consultant, so that should not be included under the internal services. Wrong. Right? You can't, you can't put a condition like that. If something wrong, it is wrong. So, you can't segregate like that. So, therefore, that is also a not a correct answer. So, therefore, answer A, B, A, C and D are wrong answers. So, therefore, making a clear distinction between these two scopes will be the correct answer. You can go and look at the study text page number 635 of the 
internal audit chapter chapter number 20 right we are coming to the one for info of the question next question One for info from the corresponding figures, corresponding figures SLA US generally it is SLA US 710. So, we will read the question you are you are the audit manager at HNS Associate, a firm of chartered accountant. You are currently performing the audit of SK Warehouse Private Limited. So, you are an audit manager of HN Associate. So, you are an uh, HNS. Oh, it's an audit firm. You are audit manager. Now, a firm of chartered accountants, you are currently performing the audit of SK Warehouse and Complex Private Limited. So, you are auditing SK, you are auditing the SK. Always draw draw the story like this in, a, in the paper itself. When you are writing the MCQ question or any question in the auditing paper, always try to draw the picture so that it will ensure that you understand the question in a proper way. For the year end of 31st March 2021, your firm has expressed an unmodified audit opinion on the financial statement of SK for the year end of 31st March 2021. So, 31, 31st March 2021, 20 right, yes 20. So, you have given an unmodified opinion. So that means audit audit opinion has audit opinion has not been qualified disclaim or adverse. During the current year, current year audit, your team discovered that a material misstatement exists in the finance statement for the year under 31st March 2020. So now you while you are carrying out the 31st March 2021 financial audit, and you notice that so there is a misstatement in the comparative finance statement which are represented or which issued on. So, material misstatement, so you have notice on the comparative finance statements. This matter was brought to the attention of the management, but they did not agree to restate the comparative figures in the finance statement for the year under 31st March 2021. As you are aware, so when you prepare the 2000, when you prepare the 2020 financial figures, 21, always 2020 figures has been given as the comparative figure which you learn from your A-level, Sansandhanatmaka Tarutu. So, always, so comparative figures are given to read, to read, to have a better reading, because when you give the revenue, when you give the revenue of the current year, so always you give the revenue of the previous year, then only reader will have a better information, then only reader can, can have a, can, can understand what has happened and make correct decisions. This is we call in auditing standard corresponding figures corresponding figures. If you can remember the standard SLA US 710, so we are talking about the comparative information. Comparative information is divided into two corresponding figures and the comparative finance statement. So, that, that standard, I hope that you can remember which is available uh, under the uh, audit reporting section. Now, the problem is, now here, let us say under this, when you, when you are in 2020 financially audit now, so, when you prepare the 2020 financial year, so this 15,000 has a material misstatement. So, when you present the finance statement to the current year, so you notice that the previous finance statement contained material misstatement. But you go and tell to the management, look here management, look here management, we notice there is a misstatement, there is a misstatement that which need to be corrected. You go and tell. But management say, no, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. Now, it is the call has come to take. So, you have to take a call now. Whether you are going to accept and go or you are going to modify, qualify you what. So, when there is a, when there is a material misstatement in the comparative finance statement, comparative figures, obviously, obviously look at from the shareholders angle and look at our basic diagram in auditing. Management prepare the finance statement and give it to the shareholder. 
shareholders do not trust the management so therefore shareholder goes and appoint a third party person called chartered accountant so look here chartered accountant i don't believe the auditor chartered accountant in auditor i don't believe my management so so they have prepared the finance statement can you go and check this finance statement and give me a report in in simple background if you look at this question so now auditor is coming and checking but there is a comparative finance statement there is a material error material misstatement so should it be communicated to the shareholders or not should it be communicated or not it has to be it has to be communicated so since that has to be communicated mean only way of communication take place is what so that communication that can take place only through the five step model what is the five step model which i explained in our webinar series of the audit reporting because i told you when you apply the audit reporting always up, go apply go for a systematic systematic approach don't try to think don't try to get mess of audit reporting everything try to think on a logical order which i told you number 1 number 1 is always look at whether there is a misstatement or a scope limitation if yes look at such misstatement is material or material and pervasive if not see whether which is something fundamental or that must be taken as the important matter that need to be highlighted to the shareholder if not see whether this something could be considered as a key audit matter right so number fifth if you can remember i told you so that you need to see whether it will become a key audit matter and the emphasis of matter you need to prioritize as a, as a key audit matter right so that the five step model which i explained on a previous webinar so now so if you apply here if you apply that five step model here so what it says that so there is a misstatement that misstatement is uh, if you read again look at the third third fourth sentence during the current audit your team discovered a material misstatement so you have discovered a material misstatement so you have discovered a material misstatement so material misstatement exist in the exit in the finance statement for the year end of 31st march 2021 so if there is a material misstatement obviously so that what will happen looks like that no way the question talks about the pervasiveness so you need to see when there is a misstatement so you need to see i'll write here because i'll be on the question number 4 so if there is a misstatement we need to see that such misstatement whether it is material oh material and pervasive so pervasiveness means what pervasiveness a very large impact where the entire finance statement attention of the shareholder sorry the the shareholders attention on the finance statement is diverted right so that has a huge impact pervasiveness but looks like here you can't see a pervasiveness impact looks like so it says material misstatement only so therefore you conclude that the there is a misstatement that is material then what the type of opinion that would be given as special level 105 it is qualified opinion you don't have to look at even other answers if you apply the five step model which i gave you can answer any question that are coming in your examination because in the audit reporting is one of the easiest area in your syllabus if you really want to score so you can really score of that 15 out of 15 maybe 16 out of 16 so minimum there will be 10 15 marks coming in the, from the audit reporting so therefore answer will be part a qualified audit opinion qualified audit opinion right so let's go to the next question question number 1.5 right 1.5 focus 
focus is an international not for profit organization operating in sri lanka the international donors one specified the project to be implemented in sri lanka the international donors have requested expenditure statement of which project to be audited under the generally accepted accounting principle by a firm of chartered accountants the accounting for expenditure is based on the accounting policies laid down by the head office of focus focus which is based in the netherlands and which of the following statement is most appropriate in relation to auditing the expenditure statement of the project so it's a ngo not for profit organization so focus is an ngo is a ngo right if you read again focus is an international not for profit organization in sri lanka the international donors fund donors fund specifies the project to be implemented in sri lanka the international donors have requested expenditure statement expenditure statement of each project to be audited under the generally accepted accounting principles so now donors are here in netherland so donors are here so now donors wanted the now this expenditure statements expenditure statement that are prepared by the sri lankan ngo focus have been presented to the have been given to the donors in netherland but now this netherland wants a third party person to come and audit come and audit we don't we say practitioner to come and audit this expenditure statements using to see whether these have been prepared on generally accepted accounting principles whether generally accepted accounting principles by a firm of chartered accountant so the chartered accountant will come into the place now the accounting for expenditure is based on the accounting policies laid down by the head office of focus so this is based on expenditure is based on the accounting policies laid down by the head office so this is based on the head office accounting policies now if you look at this one who has prepared this this who has prepared this one is the focus who has who has done the expenses side focus which is represented to the donors and donors want to get a third party assurance on whether such expenditure statements are prepared in all material respect that may be the objective now the question is which of the following statement is most appropriate in relation to auditing expenditure statement in the projects most appropriate number one an audit cannot be performed as they are only only expenditure assurance of the project and therefore only an agreed upon procedure engagement can be performed can you remember crest crest c r e s t so you know to to define as an assurance engagement there are five elements what are those five elements there should be a tripartite relationship appropriate subject matter suitable criteria sufficient appropriate evidences and the reporting if these five remains so that is called an assurance service i'll just recap the theory because that so you most of the students get get some time get confused here right for a chartered accountant can provide the two type of services one is assurance services assurance services other one non assurance services for that we call related services right and assurance services it can be a reasonable assurance or it can be a limited assurance right to define anything as an assurance so the five elements which is given in the assurance framework crest must prevails all five elements of the assurance framework must be satisfied for you to define as an assurance engagement if this all five criteria are not fulfilled those engagements have been categorized as a non assurance engagement related services which have been discussed under the assurance services now the first question is 
Now, this activity, first of all, you need to see whether it is coming under the assurance or an unassurance activity. So, looks like, in my conclusion, this is coming under the assurance service. Why? So, you can see a tripartite relationship, you can see a subject matter, you can see a criteria, you can see the evidences, you can see the reporting. So, therefore, you can take under the assurance services. There is no doubt on that. No doubt. So, now you have to see whether it is a reasonable assurance or the limited assurance that can be taken. Under the reasonable assurance, it is example is audit. And this is example is review. Now, if you see the examination question carefully, in the examination question carefully, so they need the audit. So, that the donors want the auditing. So, that auditing, auditing can be done. In auditing also, you know, there are two auditing can be done. One is general purpose finance statement. General purpose finance statement can be audited from the auditing standard number 200 to 710, 720. Usually, 700 reporting that can be done. And speci special purpose finance statement, specific purpose or a special purpose. So, you prepare the finance statement or the financial information or part of the financial information for a special purpose. So, if you do something for a special purpose, those has to be, those have to be audited using the Sri Lanka auditing standard 800, special purpose audit report. So, you can remember, I hope that this is available in the audit report in chapter, chapter number 16, if I am not mistaken, chapter number 16, yes, chapter number 16. So, if you read now, you have the now like this, there are two types of students who logically analyze the answer like this. Some student, some gut feeling applied and try to put the answer. I always recommend to you to be the number one student that we are logically analyze the every answer and then you, you are sure that you won't go wrong. Number one, an audit cannot be performed as they are only expenditure statement of the project and therefore only an agreed upon procedure engagement can be performed. No, agreed upon will come under the non-assurance, so therefore that is a wrong answer. That is a very clear cut. Answer is, answer A is wrong. B, an audit can be performed on the expenditure statement in accordance with the Sri Lanka auditing standard and an audit report can be issued in accordance with 100, no, that is a wrong answer because why? This is not a general purpose finance statement, not that the finance statements are prepared for a master usage of the general public, not like that. And third one, an audit can be performed on the expenditure statement in accordance with the Sri Lanka auditing standard, only negative assurance, no, in auditing you can't give a negative assurance, it's a review, so therefore that answer also wrong. We come to the final answer. An audit can be performed in accordance with SLA US 800. Yes, this is a special purpose, not the general purpose. So, therefore, audit can be performed in accordance with the 800 on the expenditure statement as they are prepared in accordance with the special purpose framework. So, therefore, answer D is the correct answer. Now, you can see, even for you to answer an MCQ question, so you need to analyze the answer like this. Then there is the chance of going wrong at the examination is very less. Right. So, we will look at the next question. So, you are, a, you are an audit manager at Pereira & Co, a firm of chartered accountant. Spicy Food PLC is a listed company engaged in the business of improving the distributing food item. SF, SFE is an audit client of your firm since 2000. Recently, a firm has been asked by the board of directors of SFC to undertake the role of consultant where your firm will be responsible for designing, implementing and maintaining internal controls over financial reporting. Which of the following is the most appropriate action to be taken by Pereira and Co in respect of the request made by the board of directors of SFE? So, my, my kind request for all of you, please seal all seal one student, dear student, always when there is a scenario given in the auditing paper, so please draw it that. So, please clarify that. Please clarify the scenario given through a diagram like this. So, it will help you or it will ensure that you get the what the examiner really asking. If not, if you just read the question, sometimes certain information 
may not be picked by you and you may come to a wrong conclusions. We will try to clarify now. Next one. One point six of the question. So you are an audit manager of Pereira and Co. So Pereira and Co is the chartered accountant. Pereira and Co. So you are audit manager. So AM audit manager. Spicy Food PLC is a listed company engaged in the business of importing and distributing food items. So you are auditor of let's say Spicy Food PLC. This is a PLC uh, important information and important information. SF, SFA is an audit client of your firm since 2000. So they have been with us from the 2000 in the year 2000 now 2021. So 21 years with you. Recently a firm has been asked by the board of directors of SFE to undertake a role of a consultant where your firm will be. So now these people are coming and asking from the auditor of the company to become a consultant, to become a consultant in addition to the audit on what, on what the designing and implementing ma and maintaining internal controls, designing, designing and implementing and implementing internal controls of the business organizations of the SFELC internal controls. Now, so it is a very clear cut answer. You have been asked by the your audit client of a PLC to carry out the consultant activities, consulting activities to design and implementing internal controls. Can this be done or not? If you are auditor of this company and if you become a consultant on the designing and implementing, obviously you know, so you are start with the what? Self review threat. So you are creating the self review threat. Why you are going to review the work that is done by you? So you mean what? You mean uh, your audit firm name here is uh, Pereira and Co. So Pereira and Company is the auditor of this PLC, and Pereira and Company is going to be the consultant in designing the internal controls and implementing the internal control and maintaining the internal control. So therefore, what you are going to do? You are going to review the system that you designed by yourself. You decide, you design some system and you are going to review, so create a self-review threat to a chartered accountant here. Can this be done or not? Just because of a threats are there, that does not mean that you can't do anything. So you can do, you can do. Can this be done or not? It depends on the private limit or a PLC. That is why, while I am doing all those questions, I am telling private limited or a PLC is a crucial information. And accordingly, this type of activity can be adapted, can be done, right? So, can be done if it is a private limited, if it is a private limited. So, this is possible with some safeguard. But obviously, if the PLC, this cannot be, this is not allowed to be done as for the code of ethics that is a fundamental theory that you should remember or you, sh you should remember to write at the examination. Then I do not have to read the answer now you know the answer. Which of the following is the most appropriate action to be taken by Pereira and Co in respect of the request made by board of directors of SFT you staff members other than the audit team members to carry out the internal audit work it's one of the safeguard. Obtain client approval for the internal audit work undertaken and the related fees. Another safeguard if it is a private limited. Ensure that the total fees of FSP is less than 15 percent of the total way. Another safeguard if it is a private limited. But because of a PLC, since because of a PLC, you cannot do this one. Not to accept the engagement since no safeguards are possible. Answer D answer D. Right, so let us go to the next question. Next question, question number 1.7, 1.7, 1 
You are the audit manager of statutory audit of EZXL PLC for the year ended 31st March 2021 and you are in the process of finalizing the audit. For the legal confirmation received, a key supplier has filed a legal case against come claiming rupees 50 million from EZXL and in breach of the supply contract. The legal case is still ongoing and the cost and the outcome will not be known prior to the audit report being signed. The matter is appropriately disclosed in the finance statement for the year under 31st March 2021 as a contingent liability. ESET Excel has reported the profit before tax for the year rupees 120 million and the performance materiality for the audit was set at rupees 6 million. Which of the following audit opinion should be should you issue? taking the above matter as the only matter identified from the audit. So, let us analyze the case now, small case, let us analyze. Right, so 1.7, it is from the audit reporting chapter number 16 again. Story is, you are the audit manager of the statutory audit of X is that excel right so let us say is that excel so that is your audit firm and it says and you are auditing is that for the year ended statutory audit of is that excel plc the company for the year ended 31st march 2021 so you carry out the audit for the 31st march 2021 financial year is so important for the legal confirmation received the key supplier has filed a legal case claiming rupees 50 million from XZL in breach of the breach of the supply contract. So, now you are auditing this one, let us say you. So, this is auditor. So, auditor carry out the audit of XZXL company. So, when you carry out the audit you see, so generally we call confirmation from the uh, uh, lawyer. So, generally lawyer, from the lawyer we call a confirmation directly to the auditor. Normally, we call a confirmation. So, that letter we call legal letter, legal confirmation. So, this legal confirmation contains and they are telling one of the supplier has taken a legal action against the X. One of the supplier has taken the legal action, has taken the legal action against the Z Excel. So, that is mentioned in the letter. Ask him 50 million, 50 million is the compensation. And now it says the legal case still going on and the outcome will not be known. So, prior to the audit report. So, this case is going on. What would be the situation? No one can predict as of now. The matter is appropriately disclosed in the finance statement. If you look at the Excel finance statement. So, this has been disclosed properly. So, this has been disclosed properly as a contingent liability. As a contingent liability as per L case 37. So, this should have been properly disclosed because it is a not a present obligation, but a possible obligation. XSLL has reported a profit before tax of rupees per 120 million and your PM is 6 million. Your performance material level set by the auditor PM is 6 million, but you can see the demand is 50 million. Now, the question is asking which type of audit, what type of audit opinion. So, apply my five step model. What is five step model number one? To see whether the scenario given here is a mis, mis it is a misstatement or a scope limitation. That is the important thing. Now, you need to decide whether this 50 million they have disclosed. That is correct. But whether this 50 million should be accounted instead of disclosure. That is the question where the accounting standard ask you to record as a provision, whereas you that has been disclosed, it is an uncompliance of the accounting standard and that will become a misstatement. But in this case, the possible outcome is not known. So, in that case, no further informations are given. So, the management can conclude this as a possible obligation and disclose. So, therefore, there is no misstatement here, no scope limitation here. No misstatement, no scope limitation mean number 1 is out and number 2 also out. So, no scope limitation, no misstatement, then you have to see the third item of the 5 step model. The third item is what? 
The third item is look at whether, whether this is something fundamental which has to be highlighted to the shareholder. Is that, is that the case? If yes, issue an emphasis of matter paragraph. If yes, issue an emphasis of matter paragraph or whether this is something to deal with the auditors matters. No, this is a, we will look at the under the press point, right. Can you remember there were four circumstances or four examples were given under the SLA US 706 emphasis of matter. There are two conditions. If something which is fundamental to the user and which is something already disclosed in the final statement will become an emphasis of matter. There are four examples. One example is exceptional litigation. If there is exceptional litigation, it becomes an example for the emphasis of matter. And if there are significant subsequent event, early application of accounting standards or a major event happen. If this four situation happen, those are an example for a emphasis of matter. So under number one, this is an exceptional litigation. And also, this satisfied the both the conditions. Number one, number one, fundamental to the user, fundamental to the user, and also already disclosed. This is something fundamental to the user and the already disclosed, and therefore, therefore, this 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 particular one should be emphasized. That will be the answer without looking at the answers. Number one. We, an unmodified audit opinion as the matters has been properly dealt with by the management. Unmodified audit opinion will be given that answer also correct. And B, an unmodified opinion with an emphasis of matter paragraph and reference to the disclosure, perfectly all right answer. C, a qualified audit opinion no, part D, a disclaimer of opinion no. So therefore, A and B are correct answers, out of A and B, B will be the most appropriate answer. Right. So, we go to the 1.8 uh, that is from the uh, uh, that is from the directly from the uh, quality control chapter, chapter number 18 of your CL1 syllabus. Which of the following clearly describe an input that will have an influence on audit quality as specified in the framework for audit quality. So, I hope that uh, you can remember the audit quality chapter that is a highly, highly examinable ex area in your CL1 syllabus, highly popular area. So, I request all of you to watch, all of you to see back, see, go and see again the study text, uh, especially uh, audit quality, so that is highly, highly examinable area. So, if you can remember the quality frameworks, there are five, there are five uh, framework, there are five items in the quality framework input, process, output, then key interactions, contextual factors. Can you remember? There are five factors in the framework of the audit quality. Out of that, the input is being tested here, has been re requested by the examiner. This is not an easy question. Which of the following clearly describe an input an input that will have an influence on the audit quality and input and input the senior partner annually reviews the each audit partner's client portfolio allocation and the time supervised by them and takes required action to uh, rebalance the client portfolio yeah maybe probably correct answer we'll see the part b the engagement partner directs, supervises, and review the working papers. So it is not a quality control activity. So engagement partner directs, supervises, and review the working papers of the engagement to ensure. So what I told you now in a quality control, basically you can see five activities: input, process, output, right? and uh, would say about the co contextual factors right and people who are getting connected through the connected through the channels right so in that case now uh, the num number one answer given here key uh, the senior partner annually reviews each audit partner's client portfolio that is doubtful answer 
Answer B, the engagement partner direct supervise and reviews. So that is not an input, that is a process. You can take it like that. And the, annual, and the auditor provides a letter to the management of the audit client detailing the weakness. That is an output, it's not an input. And prior to commencement of an audit, the audit team initiate a discussion with the client management or timeline including the required information to perform the audit. That is also a process. So that can't be an input. So if you look at the, the part B, C and D answers are not directly connected to the input. So answer A will be the correct answer. The senior partner annually reviews each audit partner's client portfolio allocation the time supervised by them and take required action to re rebalance the client portfolio that is an that is an input on audit quality in audit quality framework right under the five factors which is given so i request you to again i highlight the the the, uh, the this quality control chapter chapter number 18 please go and look at again Small chapter, it's not a difficult one. If you can relook at that, so that will be better because if you look at analyze the past papers of the last three, four examination, so this has been in each and every paper. Right, one point nine. So, uh, so you are an audit man, you are an audit manager at P and Associate, and you were recently appointed as the firm quality control manager. You have identified that P and S has established a number of policies and procedures in relation to various activities of the firm including the following there are four activities given the question is which of the which of the above activities can be considered as policies and procedures developed policies and procedures developed to address the element of quality control system so there are elements of the quality control system you can remember the engagement performance the leadership human resource policies engagement supervision monitoring so likewise there are a lot of lot of sub elements of the quality control require quality control system the question is asking which of the above activities can be considered as policies and procedures in quality policies and procedures there are four answers we will see number one deciding whether to accept or continue a client relationship deciding whether to accept or continue in continue in a client relationship it is a quality control activity, engagement acceptance, that's correct. Answer two, so therefore answer one is answer one is this is a correct this is a correct answer. And B strategically branding the firm to the acquire new clients. It's not the quality. You branding and you do marketing and get, get into the new clients, not a quality ensuring. It's a, it's an expansion or growing the business and invoicing and collecting the fees from the client. You once you do the work, you invoice and you collect the money. It is nothing to talk about the quality. So it's a day-to-day -day normal routine activities of the audit firm. And the four, hiring professional to staff for professional staff to the firm, recruitment, human resource policies. So that is an quality control activity actually in order to answer this question so you need to have a good knowledge about the quality control if you don't have this because this is a overall question not a specific question so if you haven't understood the concept of audit quality so this question is a difficult question for you right one for nine so answers will be the one and four so that is given in the answer c right i am coming to the final question the last question Right, that's a very good question. Right, Rico Private Limited use an off the shelf account off the shelf packages for the accounting system it is a fully integrated package with the number of modules for finance staff work at Riku and and all of them including the finance manager have access to the finance module access to the other modules such as sales purchase and inventories are restricted the task each person perform the task each person perform in the finance department are identified 
and segregated in addition to the monthly sale the finance director reviews the manual journal entries posted in the finance module to identify any unusual unauthorized journal entries passed in the finance module Reco is an audit client of your firm and you are you are the audit manager of the for the current year which of the following is a true in relation to your auditing strategy so in with regard to so you are here so you are the auditor and you are auditing the reco right and the question is giving a lot of information with regard to the internal controls with regard to the internal controls of the reco right and they have a accounting package so they have a very good accounting package let's say off the shelves and then uh, oh, and also it says that the finance people duties and those have been segregated segregation of duties are in a properly in place right and also finance manager finance director so finance director so he reviews reviews the manual journal entries to see whether whether there are unauthorized or unusual transaction all these controls are there in the business organization of rico so now so you are looking at this this information so now you are in the process of deciding the audit strategy audit strategy audit strategy we'll read it down number 1 since since the task of the finance staff are defined and segregated and you will be able to rely on the control related to the accounting system so now it says that you since the accounting teams every all the internal controls are in place all those have been designed so therefore you can you can rely on the controls in order to rely on the controls if you can remember or the internal control chapter so if you are to rely on the control there are two aspect to be decided decided what is that designing designing of internal control and the implementation right so if both the conditions are satisfied only so we say that it is an effective control so effective control so if there are effective controls only auditor can rely right if there are effective controls only auditor can rely so in that case if you look at this one the pros point it says it say it tells the since the task of the finance defined are defined and segregated you will be able to rely on the control so what you are talking part 1 is satisfied but part b is silent operating effectiveness silent so therefore answer a is not a correct answer answer b while the tasks are defined and the duties are segregated as all finance staff have access to the finance module you will not be able to rely on the accounting system you will not be able to rely on the no there are internal controls given so you can rely on the internal controls for that you need to assess the operating effectiveness implementation through the test of control and answer c so as the accounting system is a package system you will be able to rely on it general and application control when performing the audit just because of it is an accounting system which you purchased that doesn't mean that every system has a proper general controls and the application control without testing it you can't do so that is also not a correct answer answer d so you may rely on the system control if the mitigating control to address the risk of unauthorized access is operating effectively operating effectively so implementation through the toz if such any controls are implemented and the intended objective is achieved then auditor can come and rely on those controls so therefore the most appropriate answer will be the answer d that is the correct answer right so with that we finish the answers answer discussion to the all 10 questions but i want to highlight before moving to the short scenario questions so this mcq question if you look at this all train mcq questions are difficult you to answer the mcq question you need to have a 
practice of the question. So, therefore, they are, they are about one month, almost one month for the next examination. So, I request all of you, please take 60 MCQ questions and all the past papers has one past paper contain 60 MCQ question in the revision kit and each and every past paper contain 10 MCQ. So, do all up to now there were five, 5 examination papers, do all 110 questions before, before you are next examination right so let's move into the short scenario discussions